independent analytics. It's the no nonsense sidekick that every WordPress website needs. So what is independent analytics? Think of it like Google Analytics, but without the Google bit. And you might then go, well, does that mean it's not as good? This is way more superior. This is built for WordPress. And best of all, it doesn't ship your data off to mystery data servers dotted around the multiverse. But here's the big thing with independent analytics. You will not need cookie consent banners because none of the analytics that you're going to see or that it uses within your website will be breaking any GDPR rules. Let's get to it and have a deep dive into what you're going to get. Go over to WordPress, go to add new plugin, do a search for independent analytics. You'll find it, go and install and activate 80,000 active installations and five-star reviews. That's pretty damn good. And from the get-go, you will get a dashboard. Now I actively installed it onto the learn.websquadron website about four or five days ago. So that's why I've got zero activity on there. So just bear in mind, if you install it today, you won't see anything filter through until some days have passed by. In the WordPress sidebar on the left-hand side, I can see my settings over there. At any time you want to jump into the actual full-blown dashboard, just go and hit analytics. And we will come on to that in a moment, but let's just go over to settings. When you see this page, you're going to think there's quite a lot of settings here, but you'll notice in a moment, because I'm going to fly through this, I've not activated a load of stuff. And that's how simple and easy this plugin is. You just install, activate, and away you go. Do I want to track logged in users? Do I want to disable the views column? This one is interesting because whenever you go to your pages or your posts, I now have a column called views. So without me even going to the dashboard, I can just go into my pages or my posts or custom post types, and I will now see how much they're being viewed. And if I don't want to see the views, I can go and disable it. What's really good about the settings is that they are clearly explained. Maybe I want to block my own IP because if I'm visiting my website daily to make changes or do stuff here and there, I don't want that to skew the figures. So you can go on block. I can also ignore activity by an administrator. I can just go and click any of these roles and then click add and it won't collect information for that user. And it goes even deeper. So for all of these user roles, I could actually say that you can view some analytics maybe. Obviously in this scenario, I'm giving no access. But if you had many people accessing the website, maybe it's a directory, maybe people do want to see what their activity is like, you may want to enable some of these. I do want to point out though that for the awful one, this can be quite cool because maybe you've got 10 people who are writing blog posts on your website. You know, you share it all out. So maybe you want them to see their own analytics for their posts, but not everybody else's. You can even enable a public view count. So what would happen is I would say enable and I can pick if it's going to be on post pages or whatever. It will then say how many times someone has viewed that particular post. Now, if you're just starting off, you might not want to use this, but there is something you can do down here where you can manually adjust the values, which it can be a good thing and a bad thing because you don't want to mislead people. Or maybe you know that your posts are getting visited a heck of a lot. So why not go and enable it? And what's really neat is that if you don't want to have it at the bottom of the page, you want to have it further up, you can go and use a short code as well. Independent analytics have really fought through this really, really really well. And I just love how simple and easy it is. I mean, I'm telling you now, I installed it, went to the settings. I must have flown through it within like 30 seconds and that was it. Let's get to the meaty stuff and jump over to the analytics report. If you've been using Google Search Console, Google Analytics, Google Site Kit, you know how complicated it can get when you're trying to understand or navigate between all of the dashboards and charts. And sometimes you just want something really simple. You can clearly see the stats at the top and you get a lovely chart at the bottom. Bear in mind, I just went and activated this on my learn.websquadron website five days ago. I still think what I'm going to show you here is really interesting. Instantly, we get amazing information. How many visitors were there? How many views? How many sessions? Average session duration. What's the bounce rate? No one likes that one, right? And views per session. 
The chart at the bottom you can change from hourly, daily, weekly or monthly. I can even modify what I actually see at the top. So over here we have toggle stats. I'm going to get rid of bounce rate, views per session. Sometimes that's all I want to see on a report. Let's go and change the chart as well. I don't want to see the views. I want to see average session duration and it changed it in real time. So what does this show me? I had a lot of visitors on that particular day, but the session duration was really low. Well, that's because I released a video that had a link to my website for you to go and download a bit of code to copy what I did in my video tutorial. So obviously I was expecting the session duration to be really short. I don't need to worry. But on this particular day, the second day, the session duration was far longer. Why? I reckon it was people accessing the elemental course so I can start to analyze and data mine and understand what's happening with my website. And I did that in a matter of seconds. Now, by default, this will always show you the last 30 days. But what if I want to look at the last seven days because I've only recently activated? I can click that button. I can actually pick and choose particular dates. I can do year on year analysis. I'm going to pick last seven days. I'm going to hit apply and the chart will change. I'm now going to pick hourly because I really want to hone in on what's happening and look how quick this is happening. And I've only touched the tip of the iceberg with what this dashboard gives you. I'm now going to scroll down. You probably didn't realize that. So for this time period that we've currently got the last seven days, it's now going to tell me which pages are being hit, whether it's a page, a product or a post. And that's what I love about this. I am using the free version. I will discuss the pro version at the end with some extra features you get. But instantly, I can see that the bulk of the people visiting the website obviously is the codes page, because that's where I share a lot of HTML, JavaScript, CSS, or some code snippets for you to use for your WordPress website. What I really love about this is when I scroll to the top, we have an option to add a filter. So maybe I only want to filter on a particular page, but this gets really, really cool in a moment. I could go over and say, I want to look for codes. So let's say you've got a website with 5,000 pages or loads of posts. You could now search for a particular one, but I want to do something even more wicked. I'm going to go over and say page type contains and look at that. We get a drop down. I'm going to pick product and then I'm going to click apply. By the way, you can add filters upon filters. So you could add in another condition. In the last four or five days, there's only been 16 visitors for particular products. I scroll down and I can now see what products are being accessed and how long are people staying on it. So if you imagine I was selling clothes and the top three items were a particular brand or type of product, I might want to think about marketing that more because people are obviously coming to it. Or maybe there's a product that I thought would do really well and it's not. And I'm going to go, right, I need to change my marketing campaign. You've got to get away from just thinking of analytics as something to wow your customer or just to convince yourself that things are working and people are visiting your website and you're still in the Google rank tree or whatever. You've got to use this information for marketing, for campaigns, for your advertising, because this is going to help you to grow your business. What if you want to share this information? with someone like a client. You could take a screenshot and then another screenshot and maybe some more screenshots. Or you could just click download report at the top. You could download all the data, stick it into ChatGPT, Canva, Excel or whatever, and then do a pivot table or a pivot chart. Or you just click download PDF. And when I click open file, there's my report as a PDF page done for you. And then I could share that out wherever I want. Or maybe I want to save this report. So let's say I've done all of this. I've set it up with my particular filters. It always has to show the latest seven days because I'm going to review this on a weekly basis and I filtered onto product. We have a button at the top called save as. I'm going to click it. I've called it last seven day products. Click save as and it then appears on the left hand side. So when I click pages, it goes back to the default report. If I had any blog posts on here, which I have not got on this particular site, it would have shown me that But I can easily go to last seven day products and it brings up the report 
or maybe I just care about what's happening today and again it goes and changes for me and the stats aren't looking so great but that's the beauty about this tool I'm just clicking and it changes I'm not sat there with an egg timer waiting for it to get to the point of what I clicked are you liking what you've seen so far and there's so much more so how did my 846 visitors actually find me I'm gonna click referrers and we still have the same information at the top you can go and toggle what stats you see date filters if you do want to apply a particular filter and you do have some options over here and when you scroll down you get to see how they find my website obviously I do a lot of YouTube videos I share a lot of code of how to do stuff for you to replicate what's in the video so you click a link and it brings you over to the website so YouTube would be my highest referrer but I can also see people are coming directly as well so that's really good that means people remember the website they're typing in the url direct and they're coming over to me some are coming from google only 35 so do i need to think about marketing over there or they're coming from my main domain website where there's a link so so much information i'm getting out of here really quickly if i go to search engine traffic only 40 visitors came from actual search engine traffic which we've already identified but i can see which ones social media traffic 602 and obviously youtube but you can see how some are coming from facebook as well i should point out though that for every report if i decide i don't care about the bounce rate you'll see an option called toggle columns and i can go and get rid of the bounce rate and it now disappears so when you export or download your report you can control what you get and what you share with other people so where are all of my viewers coming from let's go to geography we get a map i can highlight over it to get my stats or i could scroll down to the table and i'm going to add in a filter i could go with europe i could go with united kingdom i could go with england i could even go specifically to a city what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to country type in united kingdom and click apply so i've only got 50 in the last five days and when i scroll down i can now see well where are they coming from and there's no one from my hometown which is really upsetting just take a moment to absorb what i've just done on screen with you i'm actually going to save this report so i could click save as at the top or i could even hit the plus sign as well and it will then add it as a brand new report now one of the reasons i don't quite like that my recommendation like what i did earlier is to hit save as with a proper title hit save as and it will now appear but then what you have to do is go back over to the previous one if you hit the plus sign and get rid of it you will notice that whenever you go to any report you have the option to do make default as well hit the button to convert it into a star and at any time i now go back into my dashboard wherever i'm using it from the wordpress admin dashboard or whether i click analytics over here it will instantly go to that particular report because i made that my default i can have a look at my devices so how many people are accessing my website via desktop mobile or tablet maybe i want to see which browsers they're using the os option is going to show me that most people are using a windows or a mac and I just want to show you this other report where we've got loads more information. When you click blog post, you'll get to analyze all of that activity as well. Now, before any of you start to accuse me of loving this too much, because I really do love it, there are some limitations. Like we don't have a proper slice and dice feature at the moment. I used to do a lot of data analytics and data mining. I like to be able to slice the data how I want. So maybe I want to click this particular post or page. And then I want it to refine the stats to just show me info for that. And I now want to know what devices, what browsers, what part of the world were they coming from? We don't have that yet, but it is on their roadmap and they are working on it. And when they enable that feature, this will become even more powerful now i want to talk about the pro version and why you may want to upgrade but a lot of you are going to be really happy rolling out with the free version so at the moment we get the stats at the top we get chart and we get some further information below and you do have to jump around if you want to see different information because we don't have a slice and dice feature yet but like i said it is on their roadmap the pro version would give you an overview report which means you get to view different dashboards at the same time. You can mix and match what you see. You can also rearrange items. 
you also get the ability to do campaigns. And this can be mega useful if you're using like a subscription newsletter or you're tracking the launch of a particular product and you just want to know if your investments into campaigning are working. You can even track clicks on your website. And I know people that have resorted to using some funky code or they go and use an extra plugin. You will get that with the pro version. And what if your website is being visited by a lot of people right now, like people access my website for courses, or maybe you've got a directory website and you want real time statistics, you can get that. So what's the cost of the pro version? $54 per year per site. Now, like I said, a lot of you are going to be happy with the free version, but they've got a major discount on at the moment. And by the way, there are going to be no affiliate commission links in the video description. This is between you and them. You can scale up between how many websites you got and you can also go for the lifetime offer as well. Please remember, you are still going to have to connect your website up to Google Search Console, okay, if you want to be in the Google ranking tree. But you don't need to connect up to Google Analytics. Just do your connections with GSC, go and install this plugin and then fall in love with the amazing statistics and data you can collect and you won't even need a cookie consent tool. The website does a really good job at explaining what you get in the free version, what you get in the pro version, it answers questions and there is a roadmap as well. This is not a new plugin, it's been out a while. And I tested it out and I tried it out on a client site a while ago and I'm loving it and it has never failed me and I'm now starting to use it on my own websites as well. I trust it. I love it. I recommend you start using it, especially if your website is only serving like essential cookies, because a lot of you will be surprised at how many websites out there are not serving non-essential cookies, even if you've got a WooCommerce website, okay? You could use this to analyze your data and not worry about a cookie consent tool, have access to loads of information, be able to share that, download it, do what you want with it, basically send it off to your clients. Maybe they're paying you for an analytical report or maybe they're not. Maybe you just run this, get some information, share it with them, talk to them about how we need to do X, Y, Z to maybe get your website more exposure, talk to them about social media marketing as well, then they will invest in you to help them out. I massively recommend independent analytics. Hey, I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon.